based on a true story. <laughs> no, but what, what did uh, inspire Kevin and Caitlin? Like, how did, how did the, where did the idea, not where did it come from, we all know where this idea came from, in the sense that, you know, we all lived through it. Caitlin and Ben and I uh, were sitting around during the early days of the COVID and there was so much fear, so much uncertainty, so much of watching the television and searching for toilet paper. And, and we didn't know what tomorrow would bring and we just wanted to sort of take that uncertainty and fear and channel in some kind of way. And we thought, well, what if we, COVID took the, you know, took the, uh, the face of a, a, a guy with a mask and a knife. And what would happen if we just started there? And, just for them, Katie? Yeah, I feel like we basically put all of our, uh, everything that we were feeling and everything that was like un unfolding with uh, the pandemic and, and put it into a killer. And I think um, in, in a traditional sense, and um, I think it, it all, if you were to like watch the movie with that in mind, it really traces that path. I felt like we're all looking for a release valve. We we're all looking for a way to just sigh and breathe, and we thought, well, why don't we just kill a? I love chase scenes. I love a um, really great chase scene. And I thought, why don't we just make a movie that's just one long chase scene and see what happens? And then it just opened up the doors to set pieces and, and the story. And, and then you know, we needed someone to. Uh, yeah, how did how did John get involved? I saw alone. <laughs> I came in one day and I go, Ben, have you seen Alone? It's so good. And and then we watched it again and then he was well, just. And I was awful. like, yeah, you're you're right. <laughs> a lot of this job is doing good ideas that Kevin Williamson has. <laughs> so I met with John and John was like, I'll read the script. I'm actually available. And like three days later, he was like, Yeah, let's let's I could shoot this. What stood out from you uh, when you first read the script? What got you excited? Well, uh, first of all, can you guys come to every showing of the movie? Best <laughs> one! Thank you, thank you. That was just, if it was all just for that, it was worth it. So thank you. Um, it, you know, I read the script at the time. I was, uh, I had been doing a show that was, uh, you know, we were, we were really dealing with kind of Economy, I would say, and minimalism, and uh, it alone was another kind of example of, of that direction. And when I read the script, I one of the things that jumped out to me was just how kind of stripped down it was, which I loved. That that it was really, you know, well, as we talked about before, <laughs> it one of the coolest things to me about the movie is that it, and Kevin said this many times, it doesn't really have a second act. You know, it kind of has a first act and it goes right into a, an extended third act. And, you know, I, I never particularly had any, like, desire one way or the other to do a, a slasher movie, but to me this one was like, uh, like a thriller in disguise as a slasher movie. It was kind of set up, you know, it, it kind of set up all these slasher movie archetypes, but then suddenly it became this kind of extended chase, as, as Kevin says, and I think, you know, once I got to like the the kitchen scene where where, where Parker is, is uh, fighting with the, uh, you know, one of the killers and, and how that whole scene unfolded, and then the second guy shows up, and I just thought, wow, this is, I really just have a smile on my face when I'm reading this, and I kind of want to just play out this, this kind of action kind of scene that never ends and 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 another thing that i really loved about the movie was again like any thriller uh you know you're always setting up these expectations in the audience and in this one i felt well there's two young women in this so one of them's got to go uh, and which one is it going to be and as it's going, you know, I thought, well, you know, maybe it's Parker because she did a bad thing, so they're going to punish her. And then, oh, well, maybe it's Mary just because we think it's going to be Parker. <laughs> and I, it kind of kept me guessing. And then when they, when it really, it turned out to be like the kind of two final girl movie. I, I love that, you know. And I thought, wow, this is really again, it's not about a, a high body count. It's actually like a survival thriller. So, for all those reasons, it, you know, it grabbed me. It was very important for us 
for the uh, NK and I vote for them to win. So we really, really yes. wanted them to win. John, um, I've always been a fan of your work, and specifically, uh, there's a, and, and you know, this is something too. Also, Kevin, in the screen films, there's a sleepy choreography to your to your slashers. They they're human. They're not superhuman. They're clumsy. They fall downstairs. Um, they get they get you know Bethlehem getting to slap them around, <laughs> which is amazing. But uh, I would love to hear from both the actors and from John about what went into the rehearsals for all that action and how those were choreographed. And um, yeah, our uh, our stunt coordinator Eliza Coleman, who's a fantastic you know coordinator. She's not a fight choreographer. She's just a great coordinator. She's been doing this for a long time. She's done stunts for a long time, and she brought in great people and. You know, we she brought in stunt performers that were going to do large parts of those sequences. But you know, a lot of actors. You know, Gideon did a ton of her stuff, and and uh, and you know, Mark is a Mark Machaco who plays the dad. He's he's a very physical guy, so he did a lot of his stuff, and and it was all very choreographed. You know, but I think that was our goal. I mean, even Joel Courtney in that opening scene uh, where that opening kind of attack. He, he really did most of all of that. Um, and again, those things are also playing in long takes. We're not really doing uh, kind of lots of coverage in this movie. And we wanted things to play uh, in, in an extended take. So it has to, you know, you gotta do it over and over and you gotta match it. And so it was important to me. And again, it was in the script that these things be, you know, uh, messy. And I think that that was what I wanted. You know, I, I wanted us to really lean into this idea that it's that it's just when when someone's attacking a person with a knife, it's it's a mess. You know, and it's a brawl, and it's going to be a fight for your life. And if someone is attacking you with a knife, you're going to give them everything you got. You know, you're going to hit them with everything close by. And, and uh, I wanted everyone just to be fighting like crazy for survival. So yeah, we we, we sort of dragged that out of it sometimes. Kevin, you're about to say something. Maybe? I think we're trying to evoke some of those favorite films of the late 70s and early 80s and with a modern twist. And that was sort of our goal, and I thought the execution of all the stunts was really, I mean, what these two young actors... I want to hear, I want to hear, yeah. First of all, So, you know, what, what was the hardest day? What were the, some of the challenges that you experienced? So I feel like I speak for both of us when I say that all of the days of the shoots blended into one long night shoot as it came out in the movie. Um, but I would say that I feel like, I feel like it wasn't more differentiating or it, it was more like turning that engine on and knowing when to start warming that that up and like a lot of what you're saying about like how a lot of the choreography and stuff like that was very like action based and stuff like that and as an adrenaline junkie myself you know giving being given permission to do that i was like they're like tighten her harness she's too confident and they're like that's not your job you know but i, I think it was amazing because i uh, like in a lot of the other interviews, we're talking about how a majority of this movie is reaction. Like none of these like girls would ever like you know think that they would ever be in this situation, much less the actual context, like the larger context that they're in. And so I feel like their survival movie is really like second to second, which I feel like um, when it came to like what would my natural impulse be, they were. The safety that already existed on set allowed us to really play and like discover those and experiment with those like in like live, which is a little scary for everybody else, but for us really fun, you know. So yeah, it's awesome. I feel like I was in fight or flight mode the whole entire month. I was just like, okay, here we go. Here's another night. Let's go. And what I learned from the stunt actors and Eliza. I remember that, that, that scene where I kick him down the stairs. Woo! I did not want to do it, and I actually had to, and I was really scared I'd hurt him. He's like, no, I'll be fine. And I'm like, no, you're not going to be fine, because I'm going to kick you really fucking hard. And you don't understand, because our adrenaline was so high. Like I, blackout level the like, whole time. Like, right? like, <laughs> like, we didn't even understand. So good. Like I was, I said earlier, like, like slashers are just the who 
therapy. Best therapy. therapy. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> like, gosh. Get but, it? Didn't you just have like knee surgery? Yeah, on I um, I had a skiing accident, tore both my ACLs. Yeah. Oh, oh. And um, had two knee surgeries, so I'm like half zombie, which is hot as fuck. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So yeah, I did all that with a. Uh, Knee surgeries. But I wanted to I wanted to prove that to myself. And just like Beth said, we wanted to do all of our stunts. She wanted to she wanted to jump off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, they literally were like, okay, Beth Diesel, no, you're, I'm not, not, you're not gonna do that. Did you wanna uh, talk about going yeah, the, the lake at all? Oh gosh, at the lake four was in the um, that was at four in the morning. Um I didn't look as tired as I was, but let me just tell you, I was breathing real heavy, and I thought I could, I thought my arms were gonna fall off. Yeah. And I, that was me swimming in the lake. I had the full wetsuit under, and that sweatsuit that I was wearing was not light, and I was like, I'm gonna drown, and it's gonna make really great content for this one. It's really great, it's fine. They're gonna have that. But it was, I mean, God, I got real, I got real muscular during this film. Yeah. No, I didn't, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just because you mentioned the lake sequence, I just have to ask, Kevin, was that a, at all a, an homage to Creepshow 2? <laughs> the rat? Oh, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I, that was just a sequence that really excited me. I love this. I've been, I've kind of wanted to do that sequence for a really, really long time. and. Um, <laughs> well, we've got any questions in the audience. Anybody in the audience with questions? Right there, and we'll go down. Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the score? There was a lot of great oh. uh, um, quiet scenes of music. The sonar pulse, or the... Yeah, yeah the score was done by uh, composer Dima Fakrarov, who is uh, a guy that I actually had worked with for the first time on alone. Um, he's, a, he's just a really... Um, brilliant guy, I think, and incredibly talented. He, he comes at everything from from sort of an obtuse angle, which is what I love about him. He's one of those guys who like like literally invents his own instruments and builds them. And so he's just a, a he's he's a kind of guy who actually you know musically he's perfectly capable of of kind of delivering a traditional score if that's what you're looking for. But you know, both Kevin and I and Ben, we we really wanted something that of course was gonna, you know, was going to highlight and, and complement the sound design and the action, but we wanted something that wasn't just a, a standard score. And, and I, you know, I always like it when, when music and sound start to blend together and one becomes the other. And so this was a case of, you know, Nima and our, our excellent sound design department um, really working together so that they each, you know, if one person is handling the low register, someone else is handling the high register, and they, we kind of treat audio like one department. Um, so that score really evolved over time, you know, starting with early, you know, sketches that he would do before he's even seen footage, and, and it just kind of continued all the way until the final days of the mix, he was doing new things. but. Uh, but I agree with you, I think he did a, a wonderful job. The question right there. Uh, for me and Beth, which was the scariest moment for you guys to on set? What was, the, what was the scariest moment that you felt on set? In terms of just, I guess, the intensity of the shoot? Well, like I said, mentioned before, I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I feel like I had to like, like, kind of like get myself to be like, okay, no, 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 this is, I know I don't have a harness on in real life, you know what I mean? So uh, I would say that I, I think definitely the fall where she's like in the window and somebody like goes through the window and grabs her, that was definitely something, when I read the script and I was uh, auditioning for it, I was reading it, I, my roommate was out and it was like 7 p.m. and I quite, literally have never felt more unsettled finishing the script. And I was like, what? But that one moment, I feel like, it's the one moment where Mary's like, all right, Carver, you take the lead, I'm gonna go with you. And then she like falls off. So I feel like that was definitely a moment that like when you actually dropped in, I was like, and it's also what, seeing the house every day and like seeing those heights and like, you know, like having that really in your body, I feel like 
after a couple nights of uh, night shoots, that'll definitely that'll definitely take you there. <laughs> um, it was definitely swimming in the lake at night in uh, the dark water. Not my thing. <laughs> Not my thing. That was that scared me really badly. <laughs> We're gonna go there and then there. Yes. So I uh, think the idea to use the uh, antlers twice because we see it at the beginning. It's announced. It's used as a weapon. We think it's gone. And then we sit on the ground again. And it's like this is your clear scene. So it's like how do you get the idea to use the antlers twice? Oh, the antlers. The, the antlers. The antlers. The antlers. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I mean, I, I'll, I'll answer for for them at least. By the, I think the one thing that. Uh, I noticed in the script is that nothing was ever in there by accident, you know, so anytime someone someone picks up a bottle of anti, you know, antibacterial spray, you know it's going to be used later in a, in a key moment, and that was just something that, that Katie and Kevin were, you know, always mindful of, was nothing really, you know, I loved the kind of tight architecture of it that way, so yeah, if you're going to introduce the antlers early, uh, and they're just sitting there on the ground. Uh, we gotta use them. I think we, I think we need to retire Chekhov and do Williamson's antlers. Like, Williamson grabs antlers. Uh, there was a question over there. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 It was a two-part question, but a two-part question I like. It was a good two-part question. <laughs> Can I answer the first question? Yes. I, I just wanted to repeat it for people upstairs if they couldn't hear it, and that was, was this a, a commentary specifically the full spectrum of human reactions to COVID? The second part was, did you ever imagine that there would be an audience a full theater watching this movie? First part, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like when you were writing it, Kevin and Caitlin. We played with all those ideas because you know we were, it was such a moment of what is you know what are we trying to say? Is this movie you know we didn't want to judge the moment that you know we have this one kid who's a little irresponsible or maybe just a little reckless, and she gets in a situation and then we have Miri who does everything right and she's in that situation with her. So there's just no right or wrong here. There's no you don't know who co who's co COVID. You know, it's just like, it'll come after anyone. You know, it's indiscriminate. And and um, but more importantly, what is our responsibility to it, and what is our responsibility to the world? And we tried to narrow that down into just a friendship between these two young characters and their responsibility to each other, and how they're there for each other, and they just sort of survive the night and they come out of it a little tattered but alive. Yeah. And what Katie what do you, is it? Yeah, traumatized. When you're making a movie for an audience, you're worried, are you guys going to like these characters? Are you going to care about them? Are you going to go on this journey? And it's a balancing act. And I think the other thing that was going on while the movie was getting shot was people weren't going to movies. Right? So there was this element, are people going to see this movie in a theater? Are they going to watch it alone? So actually seeing you guys watch the movie was extremely, I, I was just thrilled and it was awesome to have it actually come out in, the, in a theater here. Um, I don't know if I'm, I just want to uh, say one thing to like the first part of your question. I was going to say, I, I guess when I read it, I didn't see it so much as a commentary because it was nothing that we were trying to necessarily have an opinion on or force an opinion on. It was, at least for me and for a lot of us, it felt like a time capsule piece. For me, like I graduated NYU in 2020, literally Whoa. on my birthday. That's okay. I short and then I was you know what a BFA you know in the middle of New York and I was like what am I gonna do you know and so to have all of these unsolved answers and all of these things that I was experiencing and not really knowing where to put it I feel like for a, both of us like as young adults there's there are so many questions there was just so many questions and so I feel like in this situation when you're put under this high like high stress a, like situation where you your chosen family, which is something that you you know develop even more in college and experience and and like I 
feel like it's, it's a coming of age slasher in like a really weird way of like, a way of like, this is not how I wanted to grow up, but here I am and we're doing it anyway, you know? And so I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm excited to like show my kids this one day and be like, yeah, exactly. So you're grounded. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, you know, the, the thing that I, my interpretation of it always was, I always felt like the movie was about COVID rage, you know, and, and, and that, and, and coming from every direction and all of this kind of pent up, kind of misdirected animosity because everyone felt so stifled and fearful of this experience that you know, there was a tendency to need to lash out at something, whether that's a person at Walmart or whether that is, you know, in the case of this, played out in a very extreme way. But uh, to me, it was kind of encapsulating a mindset, um, and that's what that's what I liked about it. There was it was very hard to pinpoint who is, you know, the, the, who were the good guys and bad guys when it came down to the kind of COVID protocol on it because in fact our killers are the responsible COVID, you know, <laughs> protocolers. But I thought was, that was that was really ultimately sort of, I mean, that was an important point and that was the way, I think that was by design to almost remove politics from it. And again, to me, it was more an, an emotional statement about that time. Amazing. Please put your hands together. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I pause this for interrupting that applause. Applause now.